Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Well, hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Photoshop User TV. This is episode number three hundred and what does that say? Three forty-eight. Three forty-eight. Wow, that's really crazy. <laughs> this uh, show is, of course, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, publishers of Photoshop User Magazine, which you get ten times a year as a member. If you really wanted to, you could pick it up in the bookstore. But honestly, it'd be easier just to get it a membership. You get, then so, you get much so much more with the membership. Hate to sound like a pitch man, but you get but so much true. more with the membership. Tutorials and discounts and all kinds of good stuff as a NAP member. So PhotoshopUser.com. If you're not already a NAP member, if you are, you're sitting there nodding your head, going, "Yep, yeah, it's a good deal." Oops, that's ignore and that. Away it goes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, also on the show, I'm kind of uh, making a guest appearance, running down the street from my studio down the street is mm -hmm. Corey Barker. Hello, good to see you again. It's been so long. And back there taking. Uh, leisurely uh, position for today is Jessica, our Photoshop girl, ready to do more Photoshop stuff. And she is, for... of course, the Photoshop girl. If you can look, zoom in on her necklace there, <laughs> perhaps, or if you yeah. can see it really well. You can't see it. Yeah, it was actually She's got says... her superhero Photoshop girl <laughs> badge on today. I was going to wear the cape, but I thought it might be overkill. Yeah, it could be. The mask no. would have been cool, though. Uh, that mask, been nice no, touch. a mask would be very cool. <laughs> I'm saving that for when <laughs> Kick-Ass 2 comes there out. There you go. Oh, there you go. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is coming out soon. Yes, all right. So, so how are you? Good. How are you, you? Ready? you ready to go again? I am. Okay, cool. So Awesome. We are ready. So so who's, who's doing what? I believe you're going up first. Okay. Awesome. Is that true? Yes. No. Yes. I got mixed up on my own lineup there. <laughs> That's okay. Yes, uh, we are going to kick things off again this week. I think Dave kicked it off again last week. So he's, there we, we go. We love him so much, he's going to do it <laughs> again this week. And he's the only one that had uh, a change of shirt, apparently. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, we're still back in time. It's, I just moved into a new house, and, and we have this yes, ridiculously large walk in closet. And as I start unpacking my clothes, I like, I have way too many Canada shirts. I mean, ridiculously <laughs> too many. So I'm actually, so shirts like this one will be on eBay shortly because I got to make is some. Is your closet room. at capacity now? Well, it's no, strangely enough, we do have room. It's just, I realize I never wear these shirts except on this show or at Photoshop World. Oh, so right. I have this big stack of shirts that I never wear. So. I never have too many. Anywho, so I wanted to show you a little idea that uh, one of my favorite expressions in Photoshop is always think about ending up with an end result. So trying to do something where as you're doing it, it might seem like you're taking kind of a roundabout way to get there, but the end result will be what you want. And what I want to do is take this photograph and make it look like it's made up of a whole bunch of little maybe Polaroids or something like that. So. Uh, what I'll let you know is, as I did this the first time, one of the things that I would suggest when you're working on an idea and you think, this is working pretty well and I might use it again, is I went over to my actions panel and I hit start recording so that if this fails miserably live, I can always press the play button knowing, <laughs> knowing it's going to work. So that's, but it also means you can use it um, for other purposes. And because of that, instead of, I could have just taken my marquee selection tool and arbitrarily drawn a selection, but I want it to be fairly even. So one of the things that I often do when I'm trying to do something like this and divide something up is use new guide, but instead of using the inches and trying to figure out, well, how big is this image, I just put like 25%. Even though it's defaulting to inches, you can override to inches. So I just have to do this several times and put 50%, and then one more this way for 75%. Oops, not 775, there we go. Now, the nice little change, by the way, in older versions of Photoshop, it would keep defaulting back to horizontal all the time. Now it goes either way. So let's go 33, and then one more. New guide, 66%. And this nicely divides my image into a little grid. Now I could use these guides to help me make my first selection. I'm going to make a new layer, and on this new layer, fill this with anything. It doesn't really matter what the color is, I just need to see it. Mm. Now, I deliberately deselected it because if I didn't, whatever I did next would put these all on the same layer, and I want these to all be separate layers. And that's a really important point. You can do two different things. If you have the layer selected still, when you go to make a copy, it'll copy it onto the same layer, but I want it to be separate. So I'm going to press Command-Option-T or Control-Alt-T. That's a way of telling Photoshop 
Don't just transform, make a copy. And then Command Option Shift T or Control Alt Shift T, or I'd like to say the entire left side of the keyboard T does it again. <laughs> so now I can repeat that. Now, unfortunately, it's not possible to take do that transformation to multiple layers at the same time the way I want to. So one new thing in Photoshop CS6, which is a blessing, is now you can duplicate multiple layers at the same time, which mm. you couldn't do before. So now I can copy them over and just do that fairly quickly. And eventually I end up with this nice little grid of photographs. I'm going to take all of these and put them in a group. Oops, I missed a couple. Don't you love it when people are doing a tutorial and they say oops? Okay, so now <laughs> let's take that and move it down below. And the whole point of this exercise is to be able to do something like this. I'm going to create a clipping group, Option or Alt click between them. And what that means is now the photograph is only visible wherever these objects apply. And now what I want to do is somehow mysteriously figure out which, this area right here, which one of these would it be? Well, normally in Photoshop, you can command or control click with your uh, move tool to select a layer, but that doesn't work when they're in a group. So if you control or right click, now it's telling me where I positioned my mouse was layer one, copy three. Well, thank goodness for that, because I wouldn't have figured that out. Now I can do free transform and just kind of rotate. And I just keep repeating that operation anywhere where I want to either transform or move. And eventually I get a button, I'm not gonna do too many for now, but you get the idea where you can do, and the whole point is I'm kind of trying to make these all overlap. And once I'm doing all that, then let's just pretend I've done, I'll do at least a couple more, I guess, just to make it look more like I had in mind. But you can see it's fairly straightforward once you've done it a few times. Let's do one down here. And normally I'm really fanatical about, well, somewhat fanatical about naming my layers, but in this case it doesn't matter because I'm using this method to select them all. Now I can go to the top one, and let's add a stroke out. So let's go inside like this. Of course, I picked one where I can't see it. It's very effective. It's down in the bottom corner here. There we go. OK, so let's go white inside something like this. <laughs> and uh, then, okay, so I realized one of the things I need to do, I missed one little step here, and I did that deliberately, of course, to show you that if you put layer styles, they're not going to show up because they're underneath the photograph. Mm. So if I hid this, then you would start to see what I was doing. So what we can do, and this is another CS6 benefit, is you can duplicate the entire group, move it up on top. Now, let's make that clipping masking. You have to do that at the end because I've already rotated all these things, so now, Let's pick one where I can actually see it. I'll still use this one so it'll be easier. Okay, so now we go stroke, white, and let's go inside. He said, and you ever notice Photoshop's not voice activated? You can't just say inside, you have to actually click on it. As much as we try, <laughs> it's like, it just, come on, inside. It oh, yeah, I, have, I didn't yeah. click on it. Okay, so now. Oh, and one other thing, sorry. Gotta the one thing myself. it never answers me is why are you doing this to me? <laughs> it never answers me right. when I ask it, ask it that. <laughs> now, here's a nice little trick. When I've got this black square, I don't really want to see the black. I just want to see the frame. So I put the fill opacity to zero. I've got all these other ones. So I just do a quick little copy layer style. And then I select the rest of these and choose paste layer style. So now I got the little effect that I was going for. Now, that seemed like a lot of work because, well, it was. So eventually what I would do, let's get this back right to this step. Remember I said at the beginning that I recorded an action. And because I used percentages for my uh, guides, it doesn't matter in the size of the photograph. Now I can hit the play button and it gets all the way to this point of giving me the group, now I would just go in and do all the rotations and mm -hmm. copy it. So all that hard work of doing all the guides Initial and everything else is done. Is yeah. done. So mm -hmm. that's the, the point of this exercise is to say, when you are doing a technique, you think, I might use this on a regular basis. To me, it's well worth at least attempting to make an action because my worry is some people don't use an action because they say, I can't do the whole thing. Like in this case, I could not have recorded mm -hmm. every single step. but. Those steps of adding guides and adding the layers and copying them, that still saved me a lot of time because it happened mm -hmm. in instance. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion to you is if you 
are thinking about making an action, don't only think of it as a complete A to Z kind of thing. Think, how much can I do? And if I can do a part of it, it's still going to save me time. Well, that's for sure. One, and one other thing you use a lot that you didn't use a lot, but use as the group. Mm -hmm. Layer groups are actually a great way of managing layers, a bunch of layers, without having to merge them into a right. smart object. Right. Or even merge well, especially them now, because now. I needed them each mm -hmm. to be individual so I could adjust them. Mm -hmm. And it's also nice now that two things in that, I could duplicate multiple layers at the same time that mm -hmm. you couldn't do before, and I could duplicate a group which you couldn't do, with using the keyboard shortcut. Before mm -hmm. CS6, you couldn't duplicate a group unless you did it manually. So it's two all, little small things that make a big difference. You know what else is cool in CS6 that I keep forgetting about because mm -hmm. I'm so used to doing it that way is um, if they're all going to have the same layer style, you could do it at the folder level for all of those. Right. I always forget that. And then mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be able to drag the layer styles up onto the folder level, and I'm like, oh, yeah, why did I, why did I add <laughs> it to That's actually a really good point. Line? In fact, I'm you glad also you mentioned that. Mask on a group. Because oh, and the fill. In you this case, I, I actually did that first. But one of the things I discovered is when you have a whole bunch of squares like this, it didn't put individual strokes around each square. So it treated it as it one, treated as one big object. So uh, I had to do it because I, I was like, darn, I was going to show that too, but it didn't work in this particular case. But it's good to know that you can do that. Yeah, of course, oh yeah, you can add a layer mask to a group as yep. well. And the fact that you can do a creative clipping group with it, and there's just so many things that groups, used to be just was a group, was just a folder you put right. layers in, and that was it. Yeah, now yeah. it does a whole lot more. Absolutely. Sure. So. All right, moving on. Let's go on to Jessica, who who's just... She looks and she looks, looks <laughs> eager to share with us something. I'm eager. I, I, I'm feeling blingy. Blingy. I'm Sometimes feel... the thing is the bling. Sometimes you just need a diamond. Sweet. <laughs> then show and us how to make one. Sometimes you don't have a diamond, and you don't want to shoot one. You don't want to buy a piece of stock photography, but you can make a one-minute diamond in Photoshop, and scale it down to like five percent, and put it on a blown-out earring in a photo, or use it to bling up your type or any other cool. multitude of uses in a very short amount of time. And Sweet. just with layer styles. So we can start with a three by three document. She definitely works or with Or any lines. size really. <laughs> and I have a pretty high DPI, but that's not necessary. And I have a layer style filled with, a um, blank layer filled with white. And really it could be any color. It doesn't matter because we're gonna cover it with our gradient Layer style. What am I doing? I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> Gradient overlay. Once again, oh. Photoshop is not voice activated. That's right. You there. can't just say it. You have to go to the right place. And we need some metallic uh, presets here. So we're going to go and click over here and load one of our presets, metals. Go ahead and append. And I'm going to choose silver. And I'm going to make it diamond, which I hardly ever use, but f oddly enough, for the diamond mm. tutorial, diamond works. <laughs> and you can play with the scale to get different looks. You'll see in a minute, but for our purposes, leaving it at 100% is fine. Click OK, and we're going to Command J or Control J to duplicate that layer. We're going to right click on the layer and rasterize the layer style so it travels with the layer when we transform it. Command T to transform. And up here in the options bar, I'm going to hit 45% and enter or return to commit to the transformation. Doesn't look like anything yet, but you can change the blend mode to lighten. And it's starting to look like a diamond already. You can grab your circle marquee tool or elliptical marquee tool and draw out a quick circle. And use that as a layer mask. Option drag it down onto your original layer. And again, I'm going to uh, Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E to merge the visible layers. And we are we can put a quick bevel and emboss on that. An inner bevel, inner bevel. And I'll change that to hard since diamonds are pretty hard. Pump up the white, take down the blacks a little bit. And you could play with the levels of this maybe. Whoops. And you know, bring up your mid-tones to be lighter, bring up the darks to be lighter or darker, because really when it gets down to it, a diamond is just facets of light and dark. Mm. And you can just, you know spend all day drawing facets, but this is good enough when it gets down to 
a tiny, tiny size. You can just drag it down and transform it to maybe five or 10% and throw it on a necklace, throw it on some type. <laughs> many, many ways to use diamonds and that's a super quick way to make them. The one thing I immediately go to is you could also turn it into a brush. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say, I was gonna say, <laughs> I'll know. bet you Corey's gonna say you could turn it into a brush. <laughs> you could and then you could <laughs> then stroke just... along a path and make a whole exactly. string of diamonds. Or put them wherever you want. Just... But yeah, that's, that's a really good point with the, uh, and something you just made me realize is the presets and the gradients. Mm -hmm. I completely forgot, you know, I've used them before, but I completely forgot those were there, so those metal ones and then mixing well, them like Well, and the, so. the diamond shape of the gradient, I'm sure I've looked at that multiple times and went, yeah, I don't know when I'd use that, but. That's yeah, just, you never look at a diamond feature and think, I'll make a diamond with it. Because <laughs> why would you, just with a name like that? It's, a, yeah. it's like, because, you know, they have the clouds filter in Photoshop, and I've never actually used it to make clouds. Not one. I've used it for so many different things except for clouds. <laughs> I, I just don't know. So, All right, let us take a quick break. We'll come back. I've got a, I've got a cool cinemagraph thing, a little bit of video fun in Photoshop, as well as some other stuff. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Sweet. <laughs> Whether you love to read ebooks on your iPad, consider your Kindle your best friend, or addicted to your Nook, Peach Pit ebooks are for you. When you purchase your ebooks from Peach Pit, you get three formats. That means you can easily read them on any device of your choice. Or if you're in the mood to read on your computer, we supply you with the PDF. Head on over to Peach Pit today to get an ebook for 40% off. Hey, we're back once again. In a second, Corey's going to show us something, I'm sure, which will be entirely cool, as it always is. But uh, you want to say something a little bit about the NAP site? I do. Uh, some of you may know, recently, we just introduced uh, full online courses on the NAP members' website. It used to be we just had, you know, tutorials, uh, large collection, a huge library of tutorials from myself, Dave, all the other Photoshop guys. We've got a whole bunch in there. But now we have these full on-length or full-length courses now. And they're geared specifically for whether you're a photographer or a designer. So you just go right in here and you can see photographers, designers get started here. So we've got a number of different Lightroom courses, of course, in addition to Photoshop for designers and photographers. And if you just scroll down, we've got a whole bunch of different things. We've got actually the first tier, I guess you could say, of this um, training phase was the in-depth series. We did basically just broke Photoshop down into all these different categories and really just kind of from the ground up, here's what Photoshop is and how it works. And then from there, we took it into the more creative stuff. So we've got, you know, like some down and dirty tricks classes and some selections, things that get very specific into the functions of Photoshop. So if you're brand new to Photoshop and brand new to NAP, be sure to check it out. It's right up here at the top, online classes. And be sure to check that out. We have, we're, basically we're at a point where we're adding, you know, one or two courses a month. So it's going to be constantly adding to that library. So uh, a huge NAP um, member benefit. So be sure to check that out. It's at Photoshop user. I know that was always probably one of the most requested things. People said these individual tutorials are great where mm -hmm. there's here's how you do this one thing with layers or here's how you do this one thing with selections, but putting them into the context of mm -hmm. a, a full course is a, a real huge Absolutely. benefit. And it's been well received for sure. A lot of people are really enjoying it. Um, we get a lot of great feedback on it. So uh, by all means, check that out. And uh, with that, you got something? I do. Um, I'm having a lot of fun, and you know, last week Dave, Dave did something with um, with video features in Photoshop, you know, doing some transitions with slideshows and stuff, but, you know, that in addition to so many different things you can do with video, not just, you know, video clips and such like that, but you can do things with animating static things in Photoshop. You know, these are, you know, these, these things called cinemagraphs, you've surely seen mm -hmm. them online, where it's an image, it's a static photo, and there's something has some subtle movement into it, like a, a hair is blowing on a subject or a car is passing by event, you know, every now and then. And these are just animated GIFs, basically, people put, um, people put online. And actually was, this actually was an accident, kind of. Happy I was actually on Photolia.com. I was looking for some stock images, and one of the pages I scrolled through, I, I wasn't actually looking for this image. This is a cool image of these jets flying in the sky. I was like, huh. Wouldn't it be cool if I could make it look like they were actually flying? So, here's what we're going to do. First thing is I need to select the jets themselves and bring them to their own layer. So I'm just going into the toolbar here and just do a, qu a simple quick selection. I'm just going to draw a selection around these little jets here. I'm not being super precise because once we get um, the animation going, it's really not going to be noticeable if there's any little elements missing. Obviously, you want to get as much as you can, but it's the kind of thing where you don't want to sit there and go, oh, let me undo it and let me 
fine tune that little bitty part. Don't concern yourself. You know, a lot of people get hung up on the little details that a lot of people won't even notice anyway. I still do that. You do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the worst habit to develop is when you zoom into like 4,000% to do something right. and then realize no one is going to see it yep. except you. <laughs> you. You labor for hours and you'd be like, everybody's like, that's great. And it's just like, it's like, did you notice the thing? I was like, no. No, not really. It's like, great. I, I did all that for nothing. So you can see it's just very, kind of a rough extraction area. I just went ahead and you know, put that on, the, on their own layer. So I'm going to turn that layer off for the moment. So now, back to the original layer, I need to get rid of those planes against that sky. So I'm going to select them individually. And since the sky is you know, relatively simple, it's just a few scattered clouds and a pretty solid blue background, I'm just going to select each one and do a content-aware fill. And voila, the planes disappear magically as if they were never there. Mm -hmm. Boom. Instances like this, it actually works well. <laughs> And away they go. But they're not really gone. They're actually on that layer now. So now what I want to do, so what I want to do to actually give these a sense of movement is make the clouds move. So I want to actually make it look like these planes are flying in straight formation and the cloud, every now and then there's going to be a cloud passing by. Well, the first thing is I need to actually extract the clouds. So I'm going to go ahead into, let's turn that layer off again. My red channel seems to be the best one uh, to extract clouds. So I'm actually going to make a duplicate of that. And I'm just going to use levels here. Uh, Command or Control L brings up the levels window. And grab the shadow slider, or the, high, or the dark slider here. The dark slider. <laughs> Go on to the dark slide. The dark slider. And just click uh, in that uh, gray area there so it makes the clouds a little bit more white and forces the rest of the image to black. Don't want to make it too wide. Don't want to go that quite that much. We want to have a little transparency in the cloud there, so something like that. So now I'm going to make that channel an active selection. I'm just going to command or control click right on that red copy. Makes it an active selection, and I'm going to create a new layer. I'm, not actually, I'm actually not going to copy the cloud to a new layer, but rather create a new layer and just fill it with white. And then I'm just going to reselect that background layer and just use my eyedropper tool highlight the blue, and then do a fill. So now I've got the sky, solid blue sky in the background, cloud layer, plane layer. But now I don't want, if I animate the clouds as they are, there's obviously those sharp edges. That's not going to look right that at all. That happens every day in the real world, a square <laughs> cloud like that. So I'm actually only going to use a part of it. Because these are going to be in motion, it's not going to be necessary to you know, use two different, you know, too many different pieces. I'm rather just going to use this little area here. And let's just do a refined edge so I don't, don't have any kind of rough edges there, like right up there, something like that. I'll just move that edge detection radius really high up there and click OK. And I'm just going to copy that to a new layer. So we'll turn off this layer. Now I have just this cloud element here. So since it's just an, a simple abstract cloud element, I'm not going to worry about sampling it up too much. So I'm just going to do something like this. Now, we need our timeline. So go to the Window menu and go down here and choose Timeline. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new timeline here. And there's our layers. So to give it a sense of motion, unlike uh, After Effects, where you actually can apply a motion blur to an object as you animate it, in Photoshop, you've got to fake it a little bit. So with that layer selected, I'm going to go to Filter, go to Blur, and choose Motion Blur. Now, I've already done this because I had to practice and make sure it worked. But the angle, I'm just basically eyeball matching the angle to the plane. So you can see the angle that the plane is at, and I am just uh, did my best to match that angle here. And the distance at about 100 pixels works pretty well. It gives you that sense of motion there. We'll click OK. So now I'm ready to animate this. So I'm going to twirl down my animation properties here, and we're going to animate position. So I'm actually going to start that. Actually, let's move that. Move my time up here a little bit to about the one second mark. And I'm going to go ahead and set a position keyframe there and then move this just out of frame right up the top there. And then we're going to move the playhead over just a little bit. We're probably going to have to tweak the time, but just over a few frames, like something like that. And then grab that and then drag it down on the other side at that angle. And then I get, oh. <laughs> now if I play it through real time, all right, yeah, the movement looks pretty good. We're almost going supersonic. Let's space it out a little bit so it's going not there. That's a little bit better. So we'll play through. Now, <laughs> I want to do that again, but now I want a cloud in front of the plane. So it looks like there's a little bit of depth in, in here. So I'm going to make a duplicate of that layer. I'm just going to press Command-J and then position that layer above 
the jets or the layer containing the jets. Now I didn't bring the keyframes over. All I did was duplicate the layer, but that's okay because I want to um, animate new elements. So if I play through here, and I basically want that cloud to kind of pass through, and then just as it's about to be done, I want the next one to start to come through. So we'll put a position keyframe there. Now it's obviously all frame again, so I'm going to have to move it over. Now, this is why it's, because it's abstract and blurred, I can do this. I'm just going to put it in free transform and rotate it basically 180 degrees. So it looks a little bit different as it passes. It doesn't look like the same form of clouds passing over. And perhaps even scale it up a little bit. And I'll position that right about here, just outside the frame like I did a moment ago. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to make that distance a little bit smaller. Because if these clouds are in front of the planes, theoretically they are closer to us. Therefore, it's going to appear to pass a little faster. I'm getting way too technical about this. <laughs> but it's still fun. So again, I'm just going to move that over and just drag that frame down here a little bit. And we will see. Passes over, the cloud passes there. And what we'll do is just bring the work area, close it in there, and then we'll just go into the pop-out menu here and do loop, uh, loop playback, which is on. And when we do that and click play, we now have our jets. And it's just going to keep looping and that's looping. That's cool. I like Corey. the sound effect too. That's, that's important. <laughs> <laughs> now, what you would do after that point, you're ready to um, go ahead and bring it out of Photoshop. You would go to File, Save for Web. You wouldn't do a render video on this because if you're going to do this as an animated GIF, it's going to loop. You would want to do Save for Web, which will bring you into the gigantic Save for Web dialog box. <laughs> And then here's where you go ahead and make sure the looping options for here for animation. It's by default set to once. Go ahead and change that to forever. So it will play forever. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you can go down here and set your color limits if you don't want the file. I mean, it used to be you had to really pay attention to these settings because right. bandwidth was obviously you know, a very limited thing uh, back, way back when. But with the high bandwidth we have nowadays, you can get away with you know, these files being a little bit bigger. But then you would just go ahead and just save and uh, would render that out as a GIF animation. Now, I'll go ahead and actually, when I played around with this, because me being me, when I was playing around with it at home, I did the clouds. I'm like, I can't stop there. So I actually posted <laughs> it. Shocking. I actually posted it on my uh, my personal website, and you can see right here. I actually gave the jets themselves a subtle little bit of movement. Each individual jet I put on its own layer and just gave it a little bit of a jolt, so it actually has that kind of movement, like the jets are not perfectly in sync. <laughs> and then the clouds are moving. Oh, the nerdiness of motion. <laughs> but there you have it. That's motion graphics um, and cinema graphs, basically, in Photoshop. So, and again, there's two ways to approach cinema graphs. You can take a video clip, which I've done this, take a video clip and then extract a still portion from it and then you know, work around that. Or you can take a static image, as I did here, and then give it some life just by using these keyframe animation techniques. So. Now, I got to say, that one I really like, because a lot of the other cinema graphs, to me, cinema graph equates creepy. Yeah. Because when you see like a person standing perfectly still and her hair is blowing, there's right. something where I saw one where it was still for a long time, and all of a sudden her eyes just moved. And I was like, ah, that's just kind of <laughs> creepy. I think you, it's cool, but a lot of them are creepy. That's you just gave me a good idea for useful. Halloween. <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. <laughs> Okay, where does that put us? Uh, Let's take the break. Another break. Let's take another break. We've got another giveaway somewhere in our grab bag of goodies down here uh, under the desk here. I'm going to find a prize. Come right back. We will give it away. See you in a minute. Hi, everybody. Scott Kelby here. I want to tell you about a brand new member benefit for members of the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. We just call it NAP for short. So at NAP, we have literally thousands of training tutorials. That's what we do. We teach Photoshop, right? But the tutorials that we've had have always been kind of short, sweet, down and dirty, quick. But now we are announcing full, in-depth online training classes. That's right, taught by some of the best instructors in the world. Now, here's the thing, too. If you're a beginner, this is so for you because the focus of our first round of classes was really on the beginner on leading you step by step to where you become advanced. And we'll be adding new classes all the time. Now, the coolest thing about all this is, we didn't raise the price. In fact, we've never raised the price. NAP still is just $99, back like it was years and years ago. But it includes a full subscription to Photoshop User Magazine, the digital version or print, your choice, and 
these brand new full-length online training courses. So I hope you'll check this out at photoshopuser.com. It's where people go to get really good at Photoshop. And we are back. We are going to wrap things up, of course, with a giveaway. And today's prize is right there in Dave's hand. He's on he's one winning. perfect photo suite seven. Wonderful collection of all the on one plugins, perfect portrait, perfect layers, perfect black and white, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All in this one. And it says on the back, it's a standalone application. Works with Photoshop, Lightroom, Aperture, and Photoshop Elements. And it's key to know that it is standalone. Everything. You can actually, you mm -hmm. don't. I mean, used to be you had to have Photoshop, you know, as right. a plug, you know, to run it. But now it's standalone. It runs really, 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 really well. Yes. Love it. So how do you get this fabulous prize? You call us and tell us how much you love. <laughs> Jessica's necklace. <laughs> no, no, what you'll do is go to kelbytv.com slash contest. Go into the show menu, choose Photoshop user TV, enter your name, email, and a comment, question, anything you'd like to see on the show, anything like that. The winner is chosen at random, so no matter how clever you sound, you have the same chance as everybody else. It's but true. It's, it's more entertaining if there's something to read. Than we used just... to have trivia. You know, I kind of miss doing the trivia. We used to have questions. You know, mm -hmm. Dave would always the one who would come up with a really cool question, and we we used to do that all the time. We just we don't anymore. No, it just took too much effort at a certain point. <laughs> Clearly, it did. Come yeah. up after 300 and something episodes, like yeah, I'm running out of. It seems like you'd have to really <laughs> reach for the questions. You know, get really creative with them, and your mm -hmm. users are just like, I don't know that one. <laughs> Even I didn't know some of the ones at the end there. So. Well, I believe that wraps it up. We want to thank you guys once again for joining us. Jessica, thank you. Thank you. For taking me. time out of your book design schedule. Because you are working on a book. Uh, you're another one right now. We right? just sent one to Peach Pit last week, mm -hmm. the Lightroom 5 for Digital Photographers book. Excellent. So hotly anticipated in the market. Hopefully in the next few months, you'll be working on my book cover. <laughs> I my hope new so. book, yes. I am do if you don't know, I'm doing a follow-up to the Down and Dirty Tricks for designers. Hopefully it'll be out uh, perhaps later this year, if not the first part of next year. So be on the lookout for that. Nice. And uh, any other announcements from you? Anything coming up? No, just, you know, same old thing, I'm traveling you've around. Got your, and, uh, you've got your new websites, of yeah, course. Yeah, new websites, PSCS6 support. And this is my favorite one because I was shocked it was available. LearningPhotoshop.cc. Dot .cc. Dot .cc. What does that mean? It obviously doesn't actually mean what yeah, we I don't think know it what, means. But I don't know. It's I'm some how, obscure country that's selling their domain name. Apparently. How perfect <laughs> is that? All right. Well, we want to thank you guys once again. Thank you, Dave. My Take pleasure. Take time on your schedule. Come and join us. And we will see you guys next time here on Photoshop User TV. Bye-bye. Bye now. <laughs>